This video shows you how to enter some general information about the room in CHVAC, as well as how to enter roof data. Click the R button in the toolbar to open the room data window. When we opened the room data window for the first time in another video, it created room 1, and we can see that it is the only room in the project. Let's name this room Office 100. In the air handler video, we defined our air handler number 1 and named it AHU1. Assigning the zone input for a room is only needed if you're going to have a VAV system and you would like to see the Z reports that treat rooms in the same zone as one big room in the calculations. Since our system is constant volume, we can leave the zone input at 0. The floor number input is only used to document the project and has no effect on the calculations. We don't need it in this project, so we'll leave it at zero. For non-rectangular rooms, you may enter one and the area for the length and width inputs. Our room is rectangular, so we will enter 35 by 30. As you can see from the label above the room height input, 0 goes to 8, so let's leave the height at 0 so it will use the default of 8 feet that we entered on the general project data window. Since we're using the CLTD method for cooling calculations, we only need to set the type input for the room to indicate whether the construction is light, medium, or heavy. And that distinction is only used for the glass sensible gain calculations. Since row 10 says medium, let's select that row. Setting the check errors box to yes would make it so that you can catch any errors in your data entry before creating a new room or closing the room data window. Common errors include leaving the room length zero or having too much window area in a wall. In the master data video, we already defined a couple of master roofs and we entered both roofs into the roof type inputs for this room. Now we'll look at the other roof inputs. Notice that roof 1's length and width inputs have been automatically updated to equal the dimensions of the room that we just entered. But since our roof 1 is only 35 by 10, change the width input to 10. Roof 2 has dimensions of 35 by 20. The ground reflectance input is used for skylights in the RTS method, but does not affect skylight gains in the CLTD method, so we can leave these inputs at the default value of 20%. The slope input is also only needed for the RTS method, so we can also skip this input in this project. For the RTS method, the direction of the roof is important for both the roof and the skylight gain calculations. In the CLTD method, roofs are assumed to be horizontal, so let's leave both of our roofs set to the up direction. Thanks for watching.